All right. Welcome back to the Wanderers podcast. I almost just knocked my mic over. It would have been glorious. It would have been number like 10 at least. Well, already, we've already had one. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. That literally just happened. So, episode 17. <sighs> They're Interview. sneaking up on, oh, on man. us, man. Like, we're almost 20 years old. I mean, 20 <laughs> episodes old. <laughs> just kidding. It's a glorious feeling to be almost 20 yeah. years old. Mm-hmm. We're almost fucking 30. Yeah, well, I am. We're young as fuck, and we don't even realize it. Like... We could do nothing right for the next 10 years and still have, like, You're, you may, vitality. You, maybe me, like, se- seven years, six years. No, nah, man. Well, not, I'm putting, not, I'm not putting, with what we just discussed in the, I'm putting the show that, today. I'm putting your theory to the test. I'm not doing anything important for the last 27 years of my life. Oh, okay. Except for this podcast. No, we're, we're doing this... This is forever. This is hella important. You're, you're stuck with us for life. Well, our life, anyway. Or you, you know, you. Sorry to say, but you might go before us. Maybe, but not like we pray that doesn't happen. We we don't wait. we don't pray. Well, we just talked a little bit about prayer in today's episode. A little tiny bit. Nothing. A little bit. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, we're not trying to uh indoctrinate uh, you. Yeah. No indoctrinations on the wanders. We just wander into topics sometimes and uh we wandered ourselves finally. Yeah. It was more like a <laughs> marathon into the fucking interview with Brian Byrne. Yeah. It took a little while, but uh we ended up all being able to get together and we ended up having a really good conversation. It's so. official. <laughs> yeah. Finally. It's official. Brian Byrne is on the Wanderers podcast. Yeah, and we had we like gelled really well. Yeah, I know. He's a great guy. He's got very um innovative innovative ideas in the works and the world as we know it. Especially in the music world might change. Well, it is. According to him, it, is, it has changed. It is changing. But it was great interview we covered a whole ton of topics from Everything from his... Pretty much everything that we usually cover. We just had our, like, normal <laughs> conversations that we usually do. Yeah. He was just there. Ch- and he... It was good. I yeah. really I really enjoyed I really that one. really vibed with him. Yeah. You, you'll get it later in the show. I guess. You oh, hate, and then... You uh, hate that shit, eh? I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. You gotta get it. That like uh, I get it, but it's not like don't look at it like as a woo woo kind of way. Just look at it as a practical way. Like I like I look I take things at face value. So yeah, when you're trying to like metaphor the way that you like your energies you're putting, it's just who you are. Like it's it's not like yeah, but you choose. Yeah, you, you put are. negative energy out, you get ne- negative energy back. You, negative vibrations. It's I get it. It's just take it at root value. It's just negativity. Why don't you take it down to the quantum level where everything's just a vibration? A vibrating string, because string theory is hilarious. Yeah. And totally untrue, because there would have to be thirteen dimensions. We do work. We do. Whatever. Don't. Man, we gotta wrap this up. I wanna go home. Sorry, I just wanted to give my take on string theory. Jason loves Bubbles, if you play one more note, Jason I'm putting you in the fucking the drunk tank. Jason loves the D. The D. I get it. You're playing the D note. Uh, it was, was kind of out of tune. Yeah, it was kind of shitty sounding. But, all right. But we all know you like those Ds. so It's a good note. Yeah. Solid, solid note. I love the D. The D... Is a good note. It's a very good, pretty good letter too. Yeah. Anyways, it's a pretty good. Anyway, we're retarded. Oh yeah, yeah we talked about this other thing too. At, we, um, I was just about to say it. I probably shouldn't say it. Uh, we got a first affiliate. Well, you'll we'll learn about that. I thought you were gonna talk about the bodies. <laughs> okay. God damn it. 
Well, I just kind of... I probably should have. Maybe next time. All right. Anyway, Stitcher, check us out on that. Uh, uh, download the app. It's a new podcasting kind of app. It's like a radio station feel to it. It's a I podcast guess. app. It's a podcast That's app. That's what it is. And um, every time you download the app, it helps us out. We, they, we joined up with their affiliate program. If you want to support the show, uh, download the app. And Do it. Just check it out. Do it. All right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it right now. All right. Well, stop listening to this and do it. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Stop. Stop now, wherever you are. We're not doing the rest of this show unless you stop. <laughs> Download. Pull over your car. <laughs> no. <okay>. Download <laughs> the other app. Okay. No, sorry. Um, somebody might be watching. And whatever. We're sorry for yelling. This is a fucking train wreck. But that, it wouldn't be the Wanderers if it wasn't. I guess not. All right. So. <laughs> Hank. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hank. And Brian Byrne, everybody. See you soon. <laughs> you want to throw down with a hoedown? I'll get my guitar. I'll get my washboard. I'll go get my string bass, which is really a keyboard. Hey, man, I'm going to go get my banjo. Maybe I'm going to go get a little accordion, man. What do you think? No. No, 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 no banjo, man. Let's go. One, two, three. Hey, yo, man, I don't know if you're going down. I'm going to take a verse right now. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. We'll shine on the one that's going to prove the untrue. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. We'll shine on the one that's going to let me blue. Bobby, put that down. That's the jug I keep stuff in. Saw that thing, Connie. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to get into it. No, no, it's my fault, Connie. I told you to saw. <laughs> Got that. Wow. All right, at least I saved it. We're recording, we're recording, we're recording, we're recording. You yanked me in the throat. We're recording. Let's do it. How many times do you have me doing that now? A lot. <laughs> You're going to have to have like a compilation of all the times. A compilation. I... Yeah. <laughs> compilation. All right, here we go. Hello. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Hey, Brian. Uh, good. Good, thanks. Yourself? Thanks, guys. Pretty good. 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 That's excellent. I'm, I'm, I want to apologize, too. I know it's taken us a long time to, to oh. get to here. It's just, it's been so nutty. Man. Oh man, no need to apologize. Hey. We understand. Yeah, we've, totally get it. We've it been happens. all over the place too, trying to get things yeah. together. Just happy that it finally happened. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, no worries, man. Me too. And it seems like, um, you know, we'll, my wife and I, we have two little boys and, and it's busy enough as it is, but for whatever reason, the summer seems completely insane. Like we're rushing through the door to try and get stuff done. It's like, wow, we were we were somewhere too long, and now it's you know, it's all gonna go sideways. They're gonna be melting down by eight o'clock. And, yeah. Well, you got a lot of stuff on like on the go, right? Like you got your this new thing with uh, music coin, and you do like Brazilian jiu jitsu and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, the music coin thing is actually. Uh, has we branched off from that it's, it's now music economy but uh that's something we can we can get into that. but yeah bjj is like one of my uh one of my really uh big passions i, I train pretty much every day if there's a two, you know a couple of days goes by if i haven't rolled i, I start to feel pretty antsy <laughs> yeah no doubt it's just like uh i get the same feeling if i don't go to the gym for a bit it's been about a week since i haven't gone and i'm starting to get a little antsy so it's, it's, I'm feeling it's, 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 yeah, for sure, man. Because it's one of those weird things where, you know, pe- people always think about, or people who aren't sort of, you know, attuned to it, would think that you know, going to the gym or, or, or you know, dedicating time to jujitsu or whatever it is, is, is all the vanity so that you look good. But it, it's such a, it's such a big thing for your head. You know, it's like, yeah. it's your time, it's your space, it's your thing to do whatever. You know, it's oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's a good good reset, man. Yeah, totally gets you in that focus zone and 
you just have that mind body connection. That's why I, that's what hooks me with going to the gym. It's not the vanity thing. Like it's yeah. part of it, but it's not yeah. the main thing that hooks me of going. It's that, it's that mind body connection where you're, it's like, I'm going to fucking lift that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just, I, no, I hear you, man. Cause it's like, you know, and even the, uh, you know, of course, but you know, we, we all want to, we all want to, you know, look nice and, and, and age well and, and have our bodies work properly and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, but for sure that, that, that sort of connection, like knowing that your body can do certain things and that you have the, the mindset to execute the physical part of it is a, is a very interesting thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been living like the last 20 years of my life really unhealthily. And I just <laughs> recently just like kind of had an epiphany where like, I, I got to start changing some stuff. Like, Literally yeah. just this past week, I just, I just made a decision to start buying more healthy food, and I think I'm gonna take That's a crack awesome. at, Props, at getting at the gym, right? So. That's awesome. That's great, well, I'm, man. I'm fucking here for you, man. If you yeah. need, like, like you said, um, in the last post- podcast we did, you said you just gotta ask for help, right? Like, so right. You never know, like, where you're gonna find it either. Yeah. It's the truth, man. It's uh, you know, like it's, um, you know, people, people sometimes feel like. Oh well, you know I'm, I'm I'm too far gone with this or that or whatever. But it, you, you just you never know. You just got to kind of open your mouth and and, uh, and and ask for help or or just or just you know throw yourself at it. I'm, I'm sure you you start to feel better. Even just you know energy levels. You know it's just uh, I I my wife and I actually quit drinking uh, about just 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 over a year ago and. Uh, it was a weird thing. Like it wasn't like a you know like we're going to go into a program or anything like that. Not that you know not that there's anything wrong with that. I have you know, lots mm-hmm. of people have done it, and but we just like with the kids and the kids being young and just thought, man, this is like you know if we if we stay up and have two bottles of wine on a Friday night, like it's it's Monday before I feel right again, you know? Yeah. And uh, so we just we just decided to stop and then kind of took everything to a whole other level, you know, with eating. Like we both went vegan and and. Uh, you know, train a lot more, and I don't know. It's just you know, it's it's an interesting sort of thing. I, I find when, and I you know, I mean, perhaps it'll sound a bit, uh, it'll sound a bit silly, but I really feel that when you vibrate at a at a certain level, um, if you know, if you're if you're if you're down and and you're not taking care of yourself and those types of things, it, it has a way of attracting those you know, those like forces and those like mindsets. And then the moment that you try and change those things and, you know, you start to, you know, you, you find yourself vibrate out of that space, you know, where that doesn't, it doesn't, you just don't feel like the same person and, and the same people don't come around anymore. They don't, they're not gravitated, gravitating towards you because you're giving something else off, something different that maybe they don't associate with anymore, you know? Oh yeah, no, I, and, uh, it's not, like when you say it might sound a little weird, like vibrating at a different level. I I get what you mean, and um, when when you break down everything, like we're all just energy. When it comes down yeah. to it, like the food we eat, the people we hang around, the thoughts that go yeah. through our head, and we let control our lives. Well, pretty you much. are literally the food that you eat is literally what makes you up. So yeah, exactly. You're yeah. putting bad stuff in your body. It's gonna do some harm. Yeah, it's the same thing if you're watching bad things or. Yeah, agreed, man. It's I it's, absolutely. I, I just from my own personal experience, I've noticed um, a lot of people. If you could say, as I've been vibrating at a higher rate, I see that I don't re- relate to some people in the same way that I used to. It's not that I don't like certain yeah. people. It's just like, I don't know. Of course. You know well, maybe I mean? you're you're finding that your relationships with these people are more unhealthy than you once thought. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's you know it's I think it's I think when you know if you're uh, you know if you're sort of vibrating at that and you know call it whatever you want like low level or high level or whatever you know um, but when you're vibrating in that way you know some some of those relationships you start to when you get introspective you go oh they weren't really even relationships they were just sort of they were based on, you know, everybody sort of self-destructing. So you had there was comfort in that, where everybody was doing the same thing. It's like, ah, I'm, I'm going to be negative, and I'm going to eat crappy, and I'm going to, 
I'm going to talk horrible about people. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's just stuff like that, right? <laughs> Where yeah. you can just kind of spiral into that nonsense. And it's easy to get sucked into that vortex, right? I, you know, I, I am. Um, and again, man, I, I'm not, I'm not in any way professing that I have it all figured out because I certainly don't. I, I mean, you know, I struggle but with all the same things. knowing that's the first step into actually stepping into the life you know you're supposed to live, right? It's like, yeah, at least I being aware of it. Sure. And yeah. it, even just being at the, the place where I work, um, it, it's actually kind of, um, it's a bit coincidental, but it's a little bit ironic too, just because of the fact I've been at the place where I have been pretty much because I'm alone and I don't have to deal with other people's like negativity in a way like yeah yeah whenever yeah. I do associate with people at my work it's like 90% of the conversations I have is either they're complaining about other people's work there or they're complaining yeah. about something right and I feel like yeah even like people want to connect no matter what but even in the worst of things like you said people like to be comforted in knowing other people are being self-destructive so it's like still even a sense of connection but it's like it, it's funny because I was doing sanding at my work and then they did uh they switched me to uh painting and I'm still alone in my own little area right. so like I can still tolerate it so it's like yeah but even still like you you can well, even sorry sorry go ahead no 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 you go ahead no absolutely I was just gonna say it's you know, if you notice that around you and you notice that, you know, hey, I could be that voice of reason or that voice of positivity, I feel like we have an obligation to be a little louder sometimes. And, you know, yeah, like, yeah, even with myself, I found I've been trying to avoid a lot of things like other people's negativity or whatever. Like, I can't constantly always be in a positive mood. That's not <laughs> that's not what we are. Like, we're both. Like, no. But. I don't know, the more I accept that, the more I, like, can try to help people get and up to that level. You know some I mean? some people are just built more to tolerate that. Mm-hmm. Like, you have people who have maybe had a rougher life than some, and then they can, they obviously have a thicker skin. They can deal yeah. with it a lot better because mm-hmm. they're experienced to it. And I think even, like, the idea of change, if if you're coming from a bad spot, even the idea of maybe someday something's going to get better, that... That feels so good. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like I, 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 I have a really good friend of mine and a, a, a part, a part, one of my partners in music economy. His name is Elio. And Elio is a really interesting cat and he's very wise. And, um, I, you know, the more, I, the more I spend time with him, the more, or, you know, talk to him, the more I just sort of love him, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that he always tells me, and it's, and it's, and it's hard to get, you know, it's hard to get through my head, you know, but he says, you know, don't, don't say hope. You know, we don't, you don't want to say hope. You don't want to say try, like you're not trying, you're doing right. Yep. And, and, um, and he and he always says, assume love. And like, I, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, what, but this, if this person is being like this way and they're really, you know, just bugging me or they're, you know, like, how do I assume love? He's, well, no, he's like, you know, that's how you, that's how you approach it. You assume love, you do what you can do. And then you just kind of, that's it. Like you let it go because if you, if you put it out there and, and there's just, a, there's no changing it, you're, you're, again, you're just going to vibrate right out of their space and vice versa. They'll vibrate to yours because it won't, uh, they'll, they'll never, they'll never sort of meet. So you don't really have to, you know, you just assume love and, 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 tr- and try and understand that, you know, somebody's coming from a different place or, or, or like you, like you said, like have the, you know, some like had a, a rough or tough up, upbringing and has, has a thick skin, but maybe you know, depending on how they deal with things, so you never know what somebody's you know true situation is unless you're you know you're right in it with them. So I think the best thing to do is to, as hard as it is sometimes, assume love and then and then uh, either you know have have them sort of start to vibrate at your level or you know or 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 they just kind of go away if that makes sense. You know. No, I I totally know what you mean because I'm literally experiencing that in my life oh yeah the more i it's a it's such a stereotypical thing to say but it's a journey right yeah of course (laughs) it's but you know we choose the journeys we want to go on but the one where you're seeking like the high road or trying to become better informed or trying to you know just be 
a better vibration or whatever. It just, Mm -hmm. it takes work and it takes failure, but we learn Mm -hmm. from that and we don't have to dwell on that failure, but we do have to keep going. You know, like, like you said, you have to stop saying, Oh, I'm, I'm trying to, and I hope it's gonna, it's like, like I've been trying to watch the words that I say too, because I'm starting to learn the power of words, you know, like people have been able to make, and break nations on the soul power of words, you know what I mean? And it's 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 tough, man. Like like yeah, you can you can you can change the the outcome of a you know, a conversation or, or a whole lifetime of nonsense. I mean we, you know, one of the things that we, we tell our kids like I would rather hear my kids swear their faces off than say hate. Like, you know, like if, if one of our kids says, you know, I hate you or I hate, you know, I hate my brother or something like that, like we just won't tolerate it. Like it's not, it's not something that flies in our house. I mean, if, if one of the kids drop the, drop the F-bomb, which they have and they do, you know, we, we try and correct it and go like, hey, but again, those are just kind of, those are words that really they don't mean anything. They're not lasting. That's not scaring anybody. Mm-hmm. But the moment you say hate, it's, you know. And like you direct it at somebody, yeah, it's intentional. You, you know, yeah, it's 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 a whole it's, it's a game changer, man. For mm-hmm. you know, just just about everything. Well, even just like people saying, "Yo, that's sick." It's like it's not like they're saying that's disgusting. They're, well, yeah, it's the yeah. intent behind it, and it's the the word yeah. "sick" might have the connotation like. Yeah, um, but there's no there's no like good meaning of hate. Like hate has always been something. That, yeah, that's always. I saw, was it Bernie Sanders? He shared a a quote. It was uh, some lady. She was saying, uh, many things have been stirred up from hate, but not one thing's been solved from it. You know what I mean? Ah, cool. Yeah, that is cool. Very true. Did you say that Bernie Sanders said that? I think, yeah, I think I saw Bernie Sanders share that on Facebook. uh, Oh, cool. He was quoting somebody else, though. It was a meme or whatever. Right on. Yeah, and that's pretty relevant right I liked now, it. for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't really want to get into it too much, but the United States is still dealing with with hate on a massive scale. And, and I, like you have like all these families like yours where everything's good and you're you're raising your children right, and I bet you a hundred or ninety nine out of a hundred families are like that. It's just those those one that it provides like it's such a big impact, like. Yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes, like, and this, I don't want this to sound uh, in any way uh, horrible or, or insensitive or anything like that, but I feel sometimes, like, those those things, those social sort of uh, moments or, or like, the, those, those atrocities sort of have to, have to happen so it hits our reset button on how we operate and how we operate in society and how we how we you know how we look and, and view each other view each other and, and and how we might you know embrace our neighbor or turn our back on our neighbor whatever that whatever the outcome is but i think that sometimes you know not that again of course i don't want to see anybody hurt i would never wish anything horrible on anybody i don't like to see violence i just it's not my it's not my thing i don't think it's anybody's thing really um, you know, sort of that, that, you know, that, that fundamental sort of on the, you know, uh, rational thinking human being. But sometimes I believe those things happen to, you know, to, 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 to teach us a lesson or to, like, again, to reset. I mean, I, I, I still believe that Trump being in power, I know we're all unhappy about it. I get it. But do, does anybody think that perhaps that, you know, it, it, it's happening at this specific time for a reason like maybe maybe this happened so that we could all go okay what is really actually going on what are we actually going to do is that this never happens again you know how do we how do we figure this one out you know well, because ev- everybody can go on and on and on about the guy but, but i mean it's, it's it's an easy target it's like okay here's this uh, you know this ignoramus you know who's a, a racist and a sexist and whatever and he's you know ruling the free world of course it's wrong Mm-hmm. But if the you know the, the the you know just pointing out the things that he does, I don't think is you know it's I don't know I, I think that I think again maybe we're we we're, we're entering into a, 
a, an age of enlightenment where everybody's going to stand up and go, this will never happen again. You know what I mean? Well, and, I see what you're saying. And, like, mm -hmm. it makes sense. But the whole basis of, like, human civilization is, like, it, it happened because we passed along knowledge to our children. And, and it, it's like that oral culture or that, that intellectual culture mm -hmm. where we can tell our, our ancestors or mm -hmm. our children and our, our future um, family that, like, mm -hmm. this is what happened. This is how you deal with it. And mm -hmm. so that happened for for thousands of years it's just getting to the point now where it's so easy for for the negative information to get passed along as well that's what i mean like positivity has to be louder and it's the whole thing with trump and i i've actually thought of that too uh i have a good friend um he he was super upset when trump was elected and all i would see was posts about trump and the xenophobia and everything like just everything like negative in that light but I kind of said to him too like maybe it just had to happen so that we really wake up to realize like this can happen and we can never let yeah. this happen again but there is a point like hate breeds hate so yeah. you That's yeah, what I mean. like you're like, saying yeah we need to this is kind of like a rallying cry to say hey wake up Let's get on top of this and fucking figure it out before something crazy or something devastating happens. And yeah, like I think I think to sorry, but I I think you know to if we sort of just fall into you know the idea that well you know like you said like hate breeds hate and we we sort of take that approach and 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 go well it is what it is and you know then mm -hmm. then things will get really bad. But I think that I I, I don't know I mean personally just from my perspective it's not an opinion but just my perspective i think that i need to uh continue on the path of you know again like assuming love and hoping that or how hope <laughs> and just working on uh making sure that whatever i put out there is the best that i can put out there and hold you know and, and hope again again i gotta get that out of my vocab but to, to switch it to you know, faith to sort of <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not just, not religious in any way, but I feel like a lot of those words have been taken out of our language, and they have power behind those words. Even prayer, like putting intention right. towards somebody that you care about, intention of yeah, you know, positivity. Yeah, right. Like I feel like you're right. That has an influence too, because later on, it might not be some kind of woo woo thing where it's the vibrations go out into the universe and then they affect that. Like but it might happen that changes your actions and your behaviors and your own influences and how that could affect somebody's life or well maybe that's it because be. that's the only person that I can, I can really right like if I'm completely responsible for me as best I can be like you know 82 percent of the time I'm being completely responsible trying to put the best out there then perhaps it does you know positively affect my kids and in turn affect other kids and and you know how I deal with somebody, you know, through a, you know a work scenario might positively affect them, and so on and so forth. So again, I, I'm the only one that I can be responsible for, and I'm the only one that you know I can, you know, because I can't I can't push this or press this on anybody. That's 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 when it gets into the craziness, you know, like that's 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 like drink Kool Aid stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, one thing, that's all. like one thing I hate more than anything is indoctrination, right? Is is trying to force other people to see what you see. Don't force yeah. it. Show mm -hmm. them. Like, show them what good you can do. Yeah. That's it, man. And we got to learn to okay. ask the right questions, too. Like, I feel like even when we're having a conversation and, you know, you're waiting for your turn to talk or whatever, like, our brains are literally wired to predict what's coming next, right? So right. W when we look at big situations like, whoa, what are we kind of predicting is going to happen with Trump, right? Like your mind, at the end of the day, you have a choice in what kind of predictions you want to lean towards. Like you could be kind of cynical and say, the world's going to blow up. Or mm -hmm. you could be optimistic mm -hmm. and say, people are really starting to wake up of the actual influence they have over the politics that go on. There might be corruption in it now. But there's still systems in play that if more people got involved with, we could 
change the whole entire world. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's exactly what I thought was going to happen. Um, it's like, with every other president or political leader, they're experienced politicians. They know how to hide their stuff. They know how to, to, to navigate, the pol- navigate the political waters. Someone like Trump is completely, he's a wild card. So mm-hmm. I knew that we were going to get a wide open view on how the system works. And we totally have. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and how, like, everyone always thought, oh, the president, he's just a puppet. Not really. Like, we can see now that Trump can actually do some damage just by himself. He can, but it puts into perspective, like, how much power we still have. It's am- it's amazing because, well, not amazing, it's stupid because Trump, maybe he is a, a puppet, but he got to pick his puppet masters. Mm-hmm. He got to pick the people that, that influence him. And that's, that's really unprecedented because before all this social media and all this craziness with Trump, you just kind of assumed that people like Clinton or Bush or Obama picked the right people to, mm-hmm. to support them, and they did for the most part, whereas Trump's just going off picking, like, leader of oil industries for environmental protect the protection agency. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, it's because you have, like, I guarantee you all those guys, they have the beliefs that, like, you know, we're not affecting the climate, whatever, so they're just going to try to push in lobbyists. Like, they're just going to put their agendas through and you know, make money, and Burn that's coal. all they care about, right, is, mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, it's not about the sustainability, like, we've grown mm-hmm. s- so far in the society to the point where it's, you know, it's almost, it's very optimistic, but it's also very, s- you can look at it very cynically, like, the opportunities that we all have now to create businesses and that actually grow them and hustle towards making something huge, if a mm-hmm. mass majority of people start doing that, that could be very strenuous on our resources and everything if all these different companies are just springing up. Unless well, we start thinking about sustainability. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Even so That's a downfall. So what you're saying is it's good when there's a lot of competition yeah. for the consumer. But when they're when markets are dominated, that's when you get into this this mm-hmm. problem of mm-hmm. people who can fund their entire presidential you know campaign. What, you know why I follow Gary Vee so much is because all of these companies that are fucking yeah, I know you th- you love it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've been so following you know, Gary Vee for yeah. a while. And I'm pretty obsessed because of the fact that through social media and all the power and stuff, like all these big corporate entities that have literally controlled the world and like all these corporations they're not using social media and they don't have the the attention like they used to when they had tv now it's in our hands to start creating media companies and putting out messages and creating these companies and starting to build sustainable things yeah we can we can get into that but I I'll tell you right now, man. I mean, I, I, well, we can get as whatever you want to. Actually, I was just gonna say <laughs> on that on that note, uh, that's why I've shifted my entire, uh, you know, my entire energy to, uh, you know, blockchain and what can be built through blockchain and what problems can be solved in every single industry using blockchain. It is, it is so. Uh, disruptive in a good way. It makes people responsible for what's going on, and uh, like crypto? and there is, is that what you're uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean that's what news economy is, right? It's, uh, it's blockchain cryptocurrency. Okay. It, it's so it's so um, it's so creative and it's so community based, and it's uh, I, I've, I've never I've never seen anything like it in, in all my life, actually, and so I couldn't be happier that I got into this. And it's funny because. It, of how it happened because it was through originally through a fan of uh, the band that I played in uh, with uh, the time of the earth and then he became a friend and we got to talking about you know this blockchain thing and, and this is years ago and I knew nothing about it and then um, as we moved on a little bit and he explained a bit more that's how I got deeper and deeper and deeper in and now I look at it as 
uh, you know, a real true solution for everything from, you know, the horrible, horrible criminal financial institutions that we deal with to, to healthcare, to music, to, I, I mean, I can go on and on and on and I'm very well aware of the, of the, the ecosystems that are being built on blockchain that will, um, you know, uh, that will, uh, benefit and help not even just in you know uh the even the the basis and the roots of certain industries like you know uh, you know uh, uh, authentication verica- verification stuff, stuff like that 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 is going to be completely um game changing you know um I, 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 there, there's so many there's so many things out there right now that are have inserted themselves in the old economy as truly you know, valueless or even, you know, of questionable value in terms of intermediaries, you know, people with their hands out that are supposed to collect their 10, 12, 20, 30%, whatever it is, that honestly have zero to do with the entire system. Um, and it's really, really disheartening. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a, there's a whole bunch of change coming. And when I... Oh, yeah. And I, I don't want to even say coming. Oh. It's here. Oh, it's yeah. just, it depends, no. you know. Go ahead, sorry. It's just, it's unprecedented. Like, all the, it's not just blockchain. It's everything, like, people's awareness, people, like, different industries popping up, different, you know, different classifications of people, for God's sakes. Like, literally, mm-hmm. people are taking the whole like the whole system that we've been running on and flipping it upside down, like the entire Absolutely. thing. And yeah. And I, you know, I, like I, I'm trying I to be think... optimistic about it. And I see the thing that's been tripping me out lately is, um, like years ago, I used to be like super into conspiracy theories and I started mm-hmm. to learn about the RFID chip mm-hmm. and how they want to have this chip that is pretty much the grain of rice Mm-hmm. that they put in your hand and it's mm-hmm. just like a little incision or whatever and then yep. that thing is literally coming to fruition now like there's actually companies that are having chip parties where they're all yep. getting chipped and stuff and then pretty much it gives you security access to the premises it has all your banking information it has all your identification everything mm-hmm. and it's just, mm-hmm. it's in you at all times like you're never not connected to the system now and like yeah i, I mean you know I, I think that you know obviously you you have the you know very well <laughs> right now we have the choice to be chipped or not mm-hmm. but i uh, i certainly would i would i would trust uh i would trust blockchain and 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 almost all of Almost all of the community surrounding it. Speak, you know, I, 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 mm-hmm. I know you're, you're. You know, you're. I don't know if you're. Are you? Are you questioning? You know how how good it is for society, or are you? Because you said you're you're trying to be optimistic, or are you talking? Are you talking about more broad, like sort of broad speaking? Are you talking the technology of the chips, or? Well, just the fact that, you know, we're. I know living in a society where automatically plugged into a system and it's mm-hmm. there's nothing stopping me from running into a bush and never being seen again. Like I like having well, there, a home and I like being there you know, is stuff stopping you from doing that. It's illegal to do stuff like that. Like you well, can't no, just, like I could go to a national park, Jason, and I could disappear pretty fucking quick. It's not legality, like Yeah, and I'm really not worried that. about the system like yeah, there's stuff stopping me technically. There is words that are written down somewhere in some <laughs> yeah. policy that is stating that I can't do this. But right. At the same time, like I it. like having some some of the luxuries that we all get to enjoy that sometimes we take for granted, and a lot of the times we end up, you know, even even our privacy, like we give that up because it's you know we're saving time and it's efficient to, you know, connect everything every account that you have with Facebook or whatever, and then every click that you have throughout, they, there's a data point on everything, right? And then yeah, eventually, it's, eventually it's going to be the Internet of Things, right? And then they're mm-hmm. going to have a data point on everything. They're going to know exactly when you took a sip of water, for God's sakes. 
Yeah. But I, I don't think it's going to go that That's self-quantify. No, it is because they're, they're trying to self-quantify everything so that, like, the advancements in health technology is going to be so insane soon. Like, we're already, we're just starting to get in stem cell things and all that. But basically what I was going to say is, you know, if we're forced to put these chips in our bodies that permanently make us into the system, whether it's like a blockchain currency, it wouldn't matter at that point. Like, if it's not, like, for me, it's like, I wouldn't want that in me. See, that's the type of thing that spurs revolution. Right. Is... I don't think it's going to get to that point because if it's a if there's a government who's forcing a chip into your body, there's going to be a revolution. There's going to be a large group of people who are going to gather together and oppose it. Right. That's just going to happen. I get I can guarantee that because I would be one of them. Yeah. So no, I totally I'm 100 percent with you there, but it's just convenience. That's the that's, thing. That's the thing. It's. It's the illusion that all this shit's saving You already time. have it in your phone. You can do everything. You can pay for anything you oh, want yeah. on your phone. Yeah. It's just outside yeah. your body. It's the same damn thing. You hear about those stores that are opening up where you literally just walk in and walk out, and grab whatever you want, and then it... Oh, like, that's kind of cool, but... It, it is. That, that's what I mean. Like, that's what trips me out about it. It's like, they don't have to force Anyways, this thing into you because we're all... <laughs> let's move this back to... Uh, this this music economy thing um yeah i want to hear more about that actually sure so it, it's like something like i don't know basically from what i've read it's kind of just like going against record labels and, and like the distribution of money right yeah well you know what see not really what it is 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 um again sort of like what i, what I started to talk about before in terms of you know be asking people to be responsible. So, so anybody of you know questionable value is, is is somebody that we want to sort of remove from the 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 system or the chain, so that the people who create or the rights holders or the content creators, they're the ones that are um, those are the ones that are being rewarded for the works. Now that said, we know that being in a band still takes a lot of different parts like you can't be in a great big band and just go okay well we're gonna we're gonna book all the flights we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we're gonna do everything on our own because we don't need anybody i mean that's mm-hmm. it's ridiculous i think that you know there are still really good people out there that can that can assist and add value to the things that you do and you build um uh, you know unfortunately for so long Again, there are people just standing there gouging and, uh, and not doing their jobs properly. And uh, at the end of it, you know, who, who suffers? Well, like everybody who's involved in that, except for the, you know, the very, very, very top of the food chain, the guy who like owns the record label and his, you know, 10 people under him and then the publishers and the same thing. But, you know, again, I think that if you really, if you really know definitively, without a doubt, that you can bring value to the music industry and its ecosystem in this day and age, then there's nothing to fear. The only thing is to just go, okay, cool. How do we, how do we on ramp ourselves? How do we become part of this? And what do we do so that, you know, we're not, you know, left behind in this, you know, archaic system and this, you know, with these, the rest of these dying dinosaurs. Um, and I think that. You know, once once people recognize, hey, there's still a place for me here, and I can do it, you know, really well. I can do this job just as good as anybody or better. Then they become incredibly valuable, and they help empower the rest of the system. And and uh, you know, it, it can be very well sustained. So it's it's disruptive in a sense because it you know it, it's here. It's literally it's here. Like it's not you know it's coming or anything like that. It's here. And uh, if people don't embrace it and try and find their, their solutions through it, uh, they will be left behind. I, I absolutely can, you know, I can guarantee it. And, uh, there, you know, there's a reason why, you know, a, a company like Spotify went uh, to a, uh, you know, uh, the Brooklyn-based 
uh, blockchain company to, to look at their, their stuff. Um, the, the thing is, though, for me, I, I believe that a company like Spotify wanted to use it so they could say they're, they're using blockchain. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're using the new technology that everybody's speaking about uh, to, to, uh, to say, hey, you know, everybody thinks this is a good thing and we're looking at it so that, you know, there's some shiny new uh, technology. We're just going to plop the, uh, the old system on top of it. And the only thing it's actually going to do for a company like that is uh, make their accounting incredible. You know what I mean? Like that, and that's really it. So uh, with, with us, we are a, uh, the MCI is a token. So you imagine the token in our system is like a, like a key or a password. So if you have tokens, you're, you can unlock features within our platform um, and in using the platform and engaging with, with artists and helping, uh, uh, you know, boost them or support them will get you rewards within that system. Um, the, the MCI can also be used, you know, uh, to, to build out your own uh, storefront. So if you were, uh, you know, a, a, a label or, you know, let's say like, you know, a really, you know, a gr- really big grand idea like a, a music school or, or whatever, those things could all exist within that platform and uh, and operate pretty pretty frictionless t- t- together. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's almost like um, it's almost like a gamification of it in a way. It's exact. It's exactly exactly it. And we're going through things right now, you know, uh, with uh, you know authentication verification, uh, where we want to make sure that those you know, the actual gaming aspects don't happen, you know, where uh, somebody just, you know, throws up a song and says it's theirs and it's, you know, a, you know, a Britney Spears track or whatever. Those things that, you know, mm-hmm. can't be done right now. And, I mean, YouTube sort of has some things that help, but this is, you know, uh, it's there. But, yes, you, that's exactly that's exactly it. It's mm-hmm. that, that uh, gamification idea. Well, um, the, what you are just saying there like trouble with copyright soundcloud just went through something like that and it almost destroyed the company mm-hmm. so they mm-hmm. they're like they're at one point i think they were seeking uh like uh they were worth like almost a billion dollars yet the mm-hmm. company makes almost no money because of copyright yeah so how is yeah. how is this this platform any different because it's all built on smart contract. So if you are a if you are a content uh, creator rights holder, you when you upload something, it's in a smart contract. So you list who's actually a part of that song, and that's done automatically through smart contract. So if I upload, like you said, a Britney Spears song, is that flagged? Yes, you can't. Okay. Do, you won't be able to do that because that's what I'm talking about. With, with working with a company to uh, to ensure that the you know the authentication verification is is bang on, and there are there are things you know there are things out there right now that are being developed that are exactly that they focus on exactly that. So that you could not you could not gain that. You could not like fake that. So that's why these things are going to work for the problems that we have in that industry. It's exactly it. The, the whole, co- you know, it's like, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible payment systems. You know, you've got, you know, you've got people that are, uh, you know, months, if not years and millions of dollars behind on payments to the people who, uh, not just perform the songs, but actually write the songs. That to me is completely criminal. Mm-hmm. You know, like why? Why is that happening? What's going on there? You you, you know, to, uh, you look at a you look at a band like you know like the band that I played in. You know, you, okay, here we we're out. It's a it's a platinum selling uh, uh, rock band in Canada, and, and granted, Canada is not the biggest country in the world, and you know, and so there's only so many you know, uh, tours you can do here, but 
you know, first and foremost, if you're a big name in this country in terms of a musician, it really doesn't mean much at all. And and that's, and that's I'm not taking away from how how hard it is to get there because there's a million bands in the country, so you're still fighting for the same spots. But you know, getting there it, it means it means very little to you having any sort of you know financial stability you know in in any way you know um and people the only people that would argue that are the people that want to lie to you about how um how much money they they may or may not make because it's a joke it's a complete and total joke well it's, i know it's yeah sorry go ahead a couple of years ago i think um <clears throat> i read an article and watched a bunch of interviews about the band metric and they kind of like cut out all aspects of like what you're saying and they did i know you said it's like impossible but it's like the the way they were saying is that they did everything on their own and they they can but granted they had a, a listener base already yeah but uh they they kind of cut everything out and they were saying whereas before they're making maybe a dollar off of every album sale to, mm. to now they're making seven dollars off of every album sale yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with the theory, but the 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 truth of the matter is they still have an agent, they still have a manager, they still have a label that does distribution, they still have somebody at SoCan who's collecting their their royalties and all that stuff. So, you know, but they're all doing it poorly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is this is the problem it's not about the jobs that can be done to help you make more money or or to to make sure that the money that comes back into your pocket is what it should be because i think that there are important people in that equation it's just that these people have taken it for granted and done a horrible job of it you know so you know i i when you know i've i've heard that before where bands say well we do it all on our own it's like, no you don't do it all on your own don't be so silly you don't do it all on your own that's 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 arrogance. That's vanity. That's and it's and it's not true. Um, and and again, sorry, I don't want to go off on a, on a tangent <laughs> there. But there there are certainly there are there are people who are very they're very hands on and doing lots of stuff, especially at the level before you're, you know, before you, you kind of break into that next round. But the moment that you have an agent and somebody putting out your record and somebody working radio and somebody, you know, uh, you know, helping you with a bio and helping you, you know, all those things. Um, then you can't really say that you're doing it on your own. Now, I do think that within the, the ecosystem that we are building, there is going to be a, a unique opportunity to build those relationships and have that connectivity with, um, uh, with people almost like an a la carte, situation where you're like i you know i really dig what these people are doing so i'm going to connect myself to them i'm going to dig but right now you have you know say you sign with label a and you know label a has a really good relationship with agency x and agency x deals with these venues and uh you know their label has a really good relationship with the program directors at you know a, B, C, D, E, F, G radio stations. It's, it's the same, it's the same crap. It's the same incestuous little circle. And, and the, the, the pile of money gets smaller and smaller, but somebody's pockets are still getting lined. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I told, yeah, that makes, makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, I, you know, we're, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I only, this is, you know, me. Personally, I, I can't I can't speak for anybody else out there, you know, because I really don't know their situation. I'm I am I am assuming a lot of things, but I think I'm fairly bang on with these assumptions. It's a sad case when you know in 1999, say with the band I Mother Earth, when we would go out, we would do. Uh, we would do shows and it was like the, you know, the, the height of my, you know, uh, visible sort of rock and roll career with that band. It was like, you know, that was, that was when, uh, the, that was when the band was the biggest for me, not when Ed, because when Ed was in it, it was bigger. But with me in it, 
it's a really sad thing when you're going out in 99 and you're getting, you know, uh, X number of dollars guaranteed to you for a show. And then you, you split up and you come back and you reassemble eight years later and you're going back out and you're making the same amount that you did back then, but it's like 10 years later. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes even less. Like something is really wrong. Like nothing's even adjusted. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, we, we, we should have been worth the same in the markets. I'm saying that with inflation, wouldn't you think that that would be, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird one. No, I get and, it. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm a prime example of, you know, somebody who was doing that gig as well as, you know, teaching, you know, kids' classes in martial arts. I, was, I took a job hanging cable. I was teaching vocal lessons. I did... I did so many things to keep everything afloat because that that career specifically in that formation with that band was not enough to 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 keep it going, you know. Mm-hmm. And and again, that was my situation and my experience. I don't know if, if those guys are making a pile more money right now with Ed and, and, and doing their thing and you know it, it looks as though they've had a great uh, a great run with the Scenery and Fish uh, uh, reunion tour and you know stuff like that um, but uh, you know it was a it was a tough it was a tough go for for me financially for sure now I'm just going to pivot a little bit because yeah. you brought it up that they're touring with Edwin now. How how did that come out? Did they kick you out? I've always wondered that, or well, was it kind of mutual? No. Here, here's here's the thing. We'll I'll say it like this. We you know we uh, we were talking uh, earlier about you know vibrating at at certain you know levels, different levels, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think I think for me. Uh, I I didn't help the situation that I was in. It was making me really miserable. Like and it, and it, and and I can't say that the band itself or the guys or anything like that. But all I know is that I was really not enjoying myself and it. And it could have been the situation in my, my, my life. You know where I was. You know I had to work in this radio gig and I was playing in the band. I was trying to do these other things and just to try and keep things afloat and so perhaps that lent to my low vibration so I'll never put that on anybody but um, I uh, I you know very publicly had sent in an audition for Stunt Hill Pilots and you know it, it it was just an audition there were you know thousands upon thousands of people worldwide that did it and uh, you know I guess mine did get a little bit of attention just because or in Canada and whatever, um, and uh, I, I I just I, I think that I think that that didn't feel good to the guys in the band. I didn't I didn't tell them that I was going to do it, and uh, and uh, I don't know. It just it, you know kind of kind of set it kind of set uh, everything up for you know it not being nice. And and again, maybe I could have. Uh, I could have made it known that I was doing it, but you know, maybe not. I don't really know. Sometimes you just don't know until you're you're in the situation. Um, anyway, it's just uh, there was there was no there was no kicking out and there was no leaving. There was just it not happening anymore. And Edwin was going to go do uh, scenery fish, and that was totally cool. And and the last that I heard, that, you know, he was going to do it up until you know. Uh, Christmas of last year or something like that and then they were going to regroup see what was going on but clearly they're, they're having a good time of it and they're probably going to make some music together and stuff like that I, I don't I don't know I mean I don't I don't I don't talk to them I don't know and I really do honestly at the end of all of it I really do just wish them well I mean I'm not you know it was uh, it, it, vibrating at the level that I was when I was at my lowest was horrible. It wasn't helping me, it wasn't helping them, it wasn't helping my family. And so, you know, how it all actually fell apart, man, 
I don't really think it much matters. I, I could have been, you know, a good part of that, but, um, but, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's done now and, and they're doing their thing and, and it's, and it's totally cool. And, and, uh, I, uh, I actually would have liked to have seen them play their, their show in Halifax when I was there. Um, you know, just to just check it out. I mean, like, you know, like I said, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stick to it for the rest of my life. I was a big fan of that band, I drink Senior and Fish, and that's that's why I sent my dish tape in. That'll never change. You know, that's still that's still a, a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll so, always you'll always have that to take with you, right? Yeah. Like, of and, course, man. And your situation kind of reminds me. You just had an interview with uh, Jeremy Taggart, and uh, yeah, I'm Jeremy. He's yeah, such he's a great, great guy. guy, and. Just even with him, I don't think he was vibing like vibing with uh, Our Lady Peace anymore, and he felt his venture was in something totally different, right? Like him, yeah, and, yeah, him and uh, yeah. It's, and uh, Jonathan Torrance too, like same kind of thing. Like uh, when he left Trailer Park Boys, he just said it was kind of like kind of like over, right? Yeah, yeah, you know when it's you know when it's done. You know when you know when it's the exit, right? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what got there or how you got there, who said what or anything like that, because it just got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I look at, you know, I look at my I look at my life now, and where I'm at and how I feel like in my head, and how I feel you know physically, and how I feel about the the, the project that I'm doing. And the relationships that I have right now, and all those things, all those things are so much better and stronger and brighter and vibrant uh, than it was before. And again, I am not saying in any way that they brought me down and blah blah blah. That has nothing to do with anything. I'm saying that whatever it was, whatever the, whatever all of it was together, was leading up to somebody exiting at some point. You know, it's like. It's like, you know, electricity has got to leave the body somehow, somewhere, you know, there's got to be an exit. And, uh, and, and, and that's it, uh, you know, and, and, and I think that, I think that you know it. And I think that maybe, I think that maybe sometimes knowing it too far in advance and not really knowing how to do it or not really knowing what the next thing is, is the hardest part. You know what I mean? Like there's, it's entirely possible that, I vibrated at a low level for so long because I knew that I was not happy doing it, but I didn't know what to do about it, you know? Mm-hmm. And and maybe and maybe they were unhappy, you know, not necessarily with me, but with the situation for a long time. You know what I mean? Like that's the, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a great big like, you know, it's not a personal thing. It's a it's a Hey, sometimes you know, you're, it just happens. It's not a personal yeah. thing. It's just people grow different ways in different yeah. rates and it's like you know when when you know you know right yeah and you and and, and the, to take it back around to what we were talking about earlier i think the the best thing that we can all do is assume love you know it's and and it, it, it it's hard it's really hard to just assume love and not be bothered by things but if i if if i if i sat around and bothered myself with any of it you know it gave it any negative sort of attention it, that 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 works against everything else that's going on, mm-hmm. and so therefore those other things that are really good right now would suffer because of the negative sort of attention or energy I I, I gave it, and I don't want to do that, you know. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, well, I think that's kind of indicative of everything, right? You wanna you wanna do your best and everything, and I think that. Yeah when you start getting those those low low feelings like like you say it's it's time to make a change and as i was saying before same exact thing happened with me in my sudden drive to better myself so i think that's a good point to to finish on too well i'm just yeah. going to add this in too when you get to those point points i've noticed in my life when you get to that state where you know you want to go up you have Mm -hmm. to put the action in because if you don't it causes that depression because you're repressing that feeling of like this knowing that you need to do something and then like for me i'm only saying in my own personal experience because like 
you know, I even just not going to the gym for a week mm -hmm. it just makes me feel off. Like I'm off in my head, my routine, my but when I put too much into it and make that my focus, like that's the only thing that makes me happy, then it's you lose balance and then you're off track with everything. Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, depression can be a tricky thing because like you said, energy needs a place to go. Like it needs to get out of the body somehow. But if, if you're in a state where you're so depressed, where you don't have that energy, like yeah, wh wherever you yeah. have those opportunities or those spurts, like just go, go for it. Like what's the worst Absolutely. that can happen, right? Like, you're at rock bottom already. Like that's a pretty good foundation to build upon, I'd say. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. <clears throat> anyway, it's been great talking to you, man. And yeah, uh, you too. I'm glad we Thanks, finally guys. had this. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. It was yeah. really good. Yeah, and again, I'm, I I I do apologize that it took a while, but I'm I'm happy that oh, we're, we got here. Man. No no worries. You can okay, come so on the show so anytime. Much. Yeah, and, you're welcome uh, anytime. We All wish right, you the man, best of luck up. with uh Music economy. Music economy. Thanks, guys. I really right. appreciate it. And take care. Bye. See ya. There we go. <clears throat> Brian Byrne. Brian Byrne. We did it, bro. As promised on episode five, I think it was. Yeah. So, uh, thanks again, Matt, for filling in. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was almost thinking we should, like, call Matt up. And then just be like, you should just come on for like a second. <laughs> and just be like, yeah, Brian, 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 Brian. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, Matt. No. no. Yeah. Uh, fine. Like, that was a good guest. I know a lot of the guests we had were more sports oriented because of like the Jay and Dan thing. But the, that no was finally someone that. that you really, really yeah. related with. So No, like... It's not like I don't enjoy those ones either because, like, I like learning about that. I just have no context to it because yeah. I've never I associated understand it with myself. Because, like, you, you and I were talking about, like, vibrating and stuff, and I was just like, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as you heard vibe, you're just like. Anyways. What? We're not going to have too much content. To, for the rest of this episode, because that went yeah, no, this a long interview time. was probably our longest interview we've had so far. I think he, I don't know, it was kind of a long time coming, right? It just like flowed, 10 yeah. yeah, and then like, like, yeah, yeah, it, ha it was good, you know. So yeah, we'll throw to Hank Hill and then continue on with whatever the hell else we're doing. Yeah. God damn, we're gonna take it away, <laughs> Hank. I don't know, Hank. I'm gonna triple jump this monkey. Could someone put pancake in my mouth? Bobby, I told you no video games at the table. And we're back. Are we? Uh, I don't know. Are we? I guess I should put this. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's pretty loud. I know we're, our levels were like way off. I thought you were che checking the levels before you called them. You just, no, I know. We, I checked call. our levels, but then... Just gotta call them. Just gotta call them. Yeah, I don't understand. Whatever. Oh, that's fine. Our levels are going to be a little wonky today. I'm sure it's... I'm sure it's fine. Uh, it's this yeah, so the levels were fine between us. But, like, when Brian come on, his levels is way, way up. I... I don't mind that because the last guest we barely hear him. Well, that he that had was like his a broken ass his phone. phone, but that's all good. Yeah, we, we still love you, dark guy. Yep. So, uh, we just finished the interview with Brian, Brian Byrne. Byrne. Yep. Finally. This fuck. Took As like promised, took like five months. Ten episodes. Yeah, ten episodes, five months. Yeah, it was like Wait. twelve episodes ago. We promised it. <laughs> yeah, I finally guess. happened. Yeah, this, he's a busy guy. It's episode seventeen. It's crazy. Yeah. So, um, any like we should probably keep this short. Yeah, no, we're gonna keep this short and casual. We'll do a quick little recap. What's going on? Well, we're not doing the. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Just do the, what's going on with you. I may not be a chip man anymore. No. No, I'm moving out into the outdoors once again. Oh, yeah? Are you going to do... Uh, landscaping. Yeah, I was going to say, you did landsca landscaping before. Are you... Yeah. 
Why don't you just start your own landscaping company? Well, I, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Why don't we just do it? I just couldn't handle being inside on night shift and being it's like terrible. a zombie. Man, that literally, like, I'm still suffering from some of it. Like, So now I'm going to be on, on the outside. Switching nights to days. To days. Yeah, man. Welcome back to the land of the living. I know. It's, I know. It's like I was saying with Brian... Just the idea of that change coming. It hasn't happened yet, but it feels amazing. Man, I've, it's like, already I woke happened up because to, you've made that right. mental switch. So right? I woke up today and I was like, all right. I was like revitalized. And mm-hmm. and like I just had a great weekend. I was down in the States. Uh, my buddy got married. Yeah, how was that, by the way? It was good. It was really good. I had a lot of fun. Good. And uh, yeah, I come back, revitalized, got a new job hasn't happened yet but it's going to and i was just like revi- like i w- i was motivated and so i got up cleaned my car and that i had, i had more plans to do yeah. more but that yeah. ended up taking the whole day mm-hmm. cuz i haven't cleaned it since before winter oh yeah the winter's the winter's the worst like i i should not be allowed to have a car in the winter no i just destroy i shouldn't it. even have a car like (laughs) (laughs) i just uh i don't take care of my cars yeah i do the minimum to keep it on the road and (laughs) me too man and then that's it i just took my car uh over to the shop um all right i'm I'm just gonna tell you this little story okay i'll try to keep it short as ken i put my car up on kijiji for sale and i posted it at like 4600 bucks and i know i know it needs work like it had a dead battery, the f- tire was flat. I had um, other pro- like known problems too. Anyway, I took it. It took me a little bit to get some traction, but this guy he was interested, so I said, "All right, like, what are you, what are you gonna offer me?" And then he ended up talking me all the way down to two grand. I was gonna give my car away for two grand because it, it 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 ended up I wanted twenty five because I knew it needed at least a thousand, and then he took it. All the way to Waterloo, which ended up being pretty cheap considering um, there's this guy that got towed from him. He did really cheap. Anyway, got it all the way there. The guy's like 2200 bucks to fix it all. I'm like, no, there's no way. Like, you should have let me take it to my mechanic. And then he's like, yeah, I'm not interested. So after he towed it back, I took it over. He's like, no, it's going to be like 800 bucks. Wow. And then why would you let him take it? Well, I was I just wanted a gun and like I'm so Never. I'm n- no, like I I got my head cleared up from that situation. I, what I actually decided I'm going to keep it for the winter. When spring comes, I'm going to actually I'm going to detail it, make sure it's up and running, safety or whatever it mm-hmm. needs to have and I'll I'll get at least 3 or 4 grand for it. Yeah. But it just I didn't want to. I don't have the money to put the work into it. I don't, you know. I need something. Yeah. But by the time winter comes, like I'll have everything fixed up. Plus, I'll be in my new situation. I'm actually going to be. Is doing, that confirmed? I I just talked with uh, him two days ago. I ran into him, and we got to give him a resume. I'm going to do that uh, either tomorrow or Thursday. But. The only thing that wouldn't get us in is if the landlord has just randomly, like, I want my son to do the superintendent position. So when that comes up and I have, you know, I'm going to be working for it, but essentially free rent, Mm -hmm. I'll I'll have a lot more options. Like, I could potentially quit Steve's and put all my efforts into books. And actually, with books, I'm going to, with what I have now, I've been considering shipping it to the American market to see what goes faster. Cause like I have some pretty good books in there and I've sold about four in the last like week almost yeah. two. But, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm going to be patient and just see how it plays out for a little bit. <clears throat> and then if, you know, say a month goes and I've only sold like two more in, in the next month or something, I'm going to be like, something's not right. I'm going to mm-hmm. try to, do it the American and you're gonna have a bonfire uh, yeah, bonfire <laughs> yeah but anyway that's 
pretty much all we need to recap on. Um, uh, one more thing. Uh, we now... Well, that's what are, I was going to throw to yeah. you. Yeah. So we're now affiliated Stitcher. with... Stitcher. Stitcher. Yeah, if you guys don't know what Stitcher is, neither do I. What is it, Jason? <laughs> it's, a, it's a podcast <laughs> app. So... Um, oh, tell me more. It's It's like a... You take your RSS feed, like any other podcast app, and, and they use it. You can listen to... So, for anybody listening, what is an RSS feed? That's where you... It's like a host, right? So, we host all our content on SoundCloud, and the RSS feed is like the link to their server. Okay. So that we can submit our RSS feed to other other apps and other... other like. Mm-hmm. Google Play and Spotify. We're not on Spotify, but... So technically, SoundCloud is our host, and then we distribute ac- across platforms with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just the connection to the server. Mm-hmm. And then it's constantly updating. Mm-hmm. So it's they're constantly in, in contact with each other. Stitcher is? Or well, Sound- any RSS feed, anything oh, yeah, that yeah, uses yeah. the RSS. But basically, Stitcher is just kind of like a combo deal like companies will come in and for podcasts they'll offer affiliate programs where you'll set up like a little kind of like an account with like a promo code and then uh whenever you sell like you specifically sell some of their stuff they'll use the promo code that you give them and then yeah, you like get money the back affiliate, so right? it's really just it's just comboing that with the podcast itself so stitcher mm-hmm. hosts the podcast and then anyone who downloads the app to specifically watch your podcast gets So Jason, gets, guess what? What? We have our first sponsor. Well, <laughs> technically. yeah, technically. It's m- affiliate, but yeah. Well, that's all sponsors are. Technically is just affiliate, you know. Yeah. You advertise on the thing, they pay you a little bit and then you get whatever commissions get back to you from using that promo code, but Yeah. And anyway. I've got a couple other feelers out too to be affiliates with other people as well. Mm-hmm. So, no, nothing concrete yet, but it'll be hopefully successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to start loading. I hate those podcasts where they spend like ten minutes talking well, about the products. Okay, th- like I get it's it. Perfect. I get it. Like the one it sells shit. The one who does it best. I think is the uh, tell them Steve Dave, because they'll they'll just be talking, and then whenever something kind of remotely yeah. comes up similar, then Brian will do like a ten second thing, mm-hmm. and then it just does that kind of periodically. Like, yeah. Well, uh, the way I see it, like what podcasting really opened up was advertising to the way you would normally talk about something as if you're talking to your friend about something you like, right? Well, they give you, they give you, uh, readouts too, right? They do. But what they used to do with Howard Stern is they would give him the readouts and he wouldn't read the readouts. He would just generally get the ideas of what they're selling, what they want him to say, and then he'll throw Howard Stern onto it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I get that too. Yeah. But like it works. Sometimes it pisses me off. Like, Joe Rogan does that, too. Like, he... Well, Joe Rogan's, like, part owner of everything that sponsors him, so... (laughs) That's true. But at the same time, a lot of people, you know, they see Joe Rogan as this alpha, highly efficient... Podcaster. ...mind-hacking guy, and they're going to buy every product that they see him taking because they want to be like that. Joe Rogan's the king. Of podcasts. Of podcasts. Uh, he's king of the world, actually, right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, the, the, the weird thing about him is there's just so many... Th- so many it's like... It's like rivers <laughs> going into an ocean. Yeah, yeah no, he's got his hands in everything. Yeah. He's relatable. He, we should get him on the show. Yeah. Joe Rogan, <laughs> you're next, bud. Yeah, great. Anyways... Like, oh, who's these two fucks that uh, think they're going to beat me in podcasting? No way. No. no. We're, the, we're the bottom of the pile. We're bottom. Whatever. We'll, we'll work our way up. We're only on 17. Wait till we're at 117 and 
We're still at the 217. Eight hundred and fifty <laughs> million. Infinity. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Well, um that's that's what I like about the wanderers. It's like you can never not wander into something like or, or like you can't run out of things to wander into. I don't know. Well, no, I guess. You're just making metaphors that like you can do that with anything. Yeah. But I get it. But we have to finish. Yeah, we should. It's a long episode. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you sleeping? I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Anyway. So you can catch us at the, at the Wanderers Pod. Yeah, check, Twitter. It, check out Stitcher. Um, go One, you just go to the App search Store. Us. Search us. Well, yeah. you go download the App Stitcher and then search us in there. Yeah. We're the Wanderers Podcast, if you don't know that already. If you didn't know that, I don't know how you even, <laughs> how got, you even here got here or how you was, was dressed yourself this it was morning. A joke. I was joking. We love you. Obviously. Please keep listening. Go. How many more I pictures on Instagram you. do we have? Like three? One. One more? <laughs> yeah. We're definitely getting one today, though. Are we? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, I guess. I guess we can shout out to. Uh, that other app. Oh, that app. That one. That. That that app. That I can't remember the fucking name of it. Oh, you guys <laughs> can't. I thought <laughs> yeah. you were just. No, uh, you can hit us up on Anchor too. Anchor. Um, <laughs> I was the, trying to be coy <laughs> until you said it. Then I was gonna play it off like I knew the whole no. time. No, the cool thing about Anchor is that you guys can actually call in, and um, if you guys want to start a discussion, you, uh, we can get that going on there, and then other people can chime in and oh, uh, see. Fuck. We're in a long time. Oh, I thought you're looking at my spike. Where it's just. Oh no, that was where. Okay. Where I laughed. Yeah, your robust laugh. Anyway. That's all for today, yes. folks. Uh, we are going to catch you next time on episode 18 with uh, don't To Be Disclosed. We don't even know. We don't even know. We're going to find it for you. Cause all right. Because we love you. Thank you. Hank, take it away. Take it away, buddy. You want to throw down with a hoedown? I'll get my guitar. I'll get my washboard. I'll go get my string bass, which is really a keyboard. Hey, man, I'm gonna go, go get my banjo. Maybe I'm gonna go get a little accordion, man. What do you think? No. No, I don't I want a banjo, man. Let's go. One, two, three. Hey, yo, man, I'm I'm going to take a verse right now. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's going to prove untrue. Blue moon of Kentucky, keep on shining. Shine on the one that's going to let me blue. Bobby, put that down. That's the jug I keep stuff in. Saw that thing, Connie. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to get into it. No, no, it's my fault, Connie. I told you to saw.